Hello. Hello. Uh, you could tell us about primordial density perturbation. What is it? Uh, why is it important? And in, yeah. in particular, what led you to discover its quantum origin? At the time when I discovered it, of course, I was not thinking that it's discovery because the field in which I was working was so far removed from observations or experiments. It was just pure fantasies. And of course, it was one of these possibilities when you can make hard calculations. In the 80s, I think most of the people already agreed that the universe was created at some moment of time. And at the beginning, it was extremely small. And because it was extremely small, you could think about possible role of quantum physics also for explaining the origin of this universe and the origin of these galaxies. And quantum fluctuations just mean that you cannot have a state of absolute rest in the nature. Without any features, you want to prepare universe, you cannot uh, cheat quantum mechanics. Because of this Heisenberg uncertainty relation, which is the corner of quantum mechanics, it tells us that there are always some wiggles or the state when something is always fluctuating. So this was the reason why we decided to exploit possibilities that maybe we could use this minimal fluctuation and after that to get the galaxies or clusters of galaxies, the largest observable structure in our universe. And of course, in these galaxies you have planets, etc. Et the whole life and whole production of everything what we have as a result of extracting it using quantum mechanical fundamental principles. So it looks like quantum mechanics, which people knew is extremely important in microscopical state, happened to be important for the whole universe. In 1990, there happened revolution in radio astronomy, in observational cosmology. And during 30 years, people were making a lot of experiment, a lot of observations. There were several space missions to get the picture of the baby universe when it was just 300,000 years old. With all these embryos from which galaxies originated, we could compare the prediction of the theory of the quantum origin of the universe with the re experimental measurement. And everything came in agreement with so unbelievable and unexpected accuracy that everybody was shocked and started to speak about boring universe that it looks like actually we learned even too much about this universe. I am super happy that it happened in my lifetime because when this theory was written, I was not even thinking that it will become possible. Well, I thought that if it will become possible, then at least in 1,000 years from now. But it happened much faster. It happened in 40 years. You always have to have some luck in science, as you understand. You have to be in the right place and not to be stupid to miss good things, you see? It's really my personal feeling that any theories deserve a Nobel Prize on cosmology, you would be the one. Do you ever think about that? As I said from the very beginning, the main thing and the main enjoyment is not the prices. I am enjoying mostly when I am doing calculations, especially when calculations go well. It happens, unfortunately, very, very rare. Of course, but you understand that prices are prices, some kind of recognition. It's important, of course, it's enjoyable, especially when the results do not come so often, but nevertheless, it's secondary thing. Advice to young students here who want to study physics? If they want to study fundamental physics that they are moving for, should be, first of all, curiosity. It's fundamental theoretic physics is like art. You see, you have to have it in your heart and you have to love it. And if you want to go to theoretical physics to become specialized in some discipline, I think actually it's a wrong decision. So young people should hear themselves, their heart, what it tells them. As I normally tell to my students, look guys, 
maybe sometimes situation is difficult as I said until therefore you have to go only if you feel that till the rest of your life you will be unhappy if you will be doing something else and for sure it's not profession for making money or for making your career said from the very beginning when I started to work on this series there was no even slightest indication that sometimes or in some visible time it will match some experiment as you understand it's very hard to predict textually people from my point of view should do fundamental science mostly because of curiosity there should be people who have for instance talent for it but there is a competition system and then they have to be allowed to investigate all kind of possible questions should be actually we have to go back to ancient greeks people like Aristotle or Socrates or Platon, they were trying to understand how nature works, who didn't care about practical applications. You can never predict what will come out of it. As we know from experience, all kind of practical application finally is the consequence of the fundamental research. Because if people would orient themselves only to the practical things, then it will be the end of the science. And I am practically convinced that it will not be developing so much because every tree should have a root. Or the tree of practical application as a root have fundamental science, which is not so directly visible perhaps for the practical application.